All right, so in this lecture, I want to cover what to do if you get an order that potentially you're losing money on, or if you get an order that's out of stock. What are some of the solutions that you can obviously, you know, use to protect your seller metrics, potentially even make money on this transaction, or and, and essentially keep buyers happy, right? So first and foremost, if you, one of the things that you can do if you get an order for an item, because I don't preach monitoring your stock levels, I don't think it's necessary. If you're using something like FBM Fox, then you won't really run into this issue. Although I don't recommend that for beginners because you really don't need to spend like the hundred dollars or whatever it costs monthly to use that service, right? You don't need to monitor your stock levels for a number of reasons. I've covered this before, but the main reason is when you're starting out your listing, um, your the listings that you're using, right? are not really going to go out of stock all that frequently within like the five week span that they're kind of live and, and you don't need to renew them right as you scale and you build thousands and thousands of listings it might potentially be a more prominent issue but you won't really face it that that much but as you scale when you do face those issues in the future you're going to be doing so much volume of sales because you're going to have so many listings that are that are you know helping you get sales that you will, you'll be able to mark them fake ship or you'll be able to, to cancel them and it won't bother your seller metrics at all. And for that reason, it, you don't need to monitor stock on Facebook Marketplace when you're drop shipping when you're a beginner for that reason. And you also don't need to monitor stock uh, on Facebook Marketplace when you're drop shipping for the reason when you scale, right? So it's not really necessary. It's not really needed. But what is needed is to understand how to deal with those when they do happen, okay? So for example, let's say hypothetically that you get an order that you're losing money on, right? Well, one of the things that you can do is you can ask the buyer to cancel. So you could say you're out of stock um, or say that you only have one left and you're damaged and you don't want to ship them uh, like a damaged product with a mind canceling the order. In that particular case, 99 times out of 100, if not more, the buyer is going to respond to you and say, yes, please cancel the order because they don't want you to ship them a damaged product, right? Even if you do not have a damaged product, that's what you can say to them, okay? And so to recap, right? Like say you're either out of stock with a mind canceling or what works you know, even better is say, hey, you have one of these left, but you didn't realize it got damaged during storage in your warehouse. Would they mind canceling the order, okay? And like I said, practically everyone's going to ask you to cancel the order or they're going to cancel it themselves, right? So if it's within that 30 minute uh, window, then they're going to they're going to file for the cancellation and you can accept it, right? And then it doesn't go against your metrics. If it's not, then what they'll say is, yes, please cancel the order via messages. And I've already covered how to use that message and appeal the cancel once you do it, right? So like if you get them to say that they want to cancel, but they don't cancel it your, themselves, you can cancel the order, then go into your insights tab in mobile. I have a lecture on this obviously already. And what you can do is then you can go into your insights, go into that specific uh, cancellate, like go into your cancellation metrics, and then go into that specific order, appeal it, and literally send them the script of the buyer asking to cancel and say that the buyer asked to cancel and it won't go against your metric. They'll review it and obviously take it off of your metric so it won't hurt you, right? So that's the first and easiest way to do it. And then obviously either if you're losing money, then you want to, after you get them to cancel the order, you want to mark that item up even more so that you're not losing money on future orders, okay? Now, if it's out of stock on Facebook, what you can do is you can try to potentially find another item. Uh, if you're like, for example, like a lot of items will be sold on multiple different websites. So if you, you have an item that's out of stock on Amazon, a lot of times it'll be selling on eBay. It'll be selling on Walmart. It'll be selling on another website, right? You can take a chance if you can find that exact item. Another example is like I sell on eBay all the time now. And one of the things that I you know do on eBay is you'll notice that like a lot of sellers have similar listings, right? Or the same listing. So if your listing specifically is out, another seller might have that listing, right? So you can either search that, um, you can Google it, you can search it on eBay, you can search it on Walmart, you can search it on uh, Amazon or any number of websites and chances are you will be able to find that, okay? Now, if still, okay, if still you're out of stock and you can't find it, then what you can do is you can either cancel it if it doesn't really hurt your metrics that much. And you can, again, look at your metrics. I've covered this in a previous lecture by going into your, um, into like the little icon for, for you on like the, the person looking icon on mobile on the right. I'm just talking, but I'm going to show you this in a second. Um, on the right on your mobile and then going into insights, like I said before, going into your cancellation rate. And then like, you can see all the orders that you've canceled, right? As long as you keep that under, I believe it's 10% now it might be going down to five, but as long as you keep that relatively low, you're allowed to cancel orders and it doesn't go against your metrics. And then you can mark that item out of stock. But one of the tricks, if you do not want to, uh, an order to go against your cancellation metrics is let's hypothetically say 
that you know you're losing money on an order or it's out of stock we'll go through two of those examples right and you don't want to cancel and for whatever reason you've may maybe messaged the buyer and they won't cancel right what you can do is you can market fake shipped okay and i use this all the time okay so what you want to do is you want to market fake ship with a fake oag tracking number but you want to record that in your spreadsheet with that uh fake tracking number okay so for example, let me show you, like, let's say hypothetically that the buyer was going to like, was, was from Baltimore, uh, Maryland, right? And the, the, they wanted the, like, you're literally pulling up the order on Facebook and they're in Baltimore, Maryland, right? Well, you're not ever going to actually order that order, right? Instead, what you're going to do is you're going to generate, uh, an order or not an order, excuse me, a fake, uh, OAG tracking number to Baltimore, Maryland, as far out as you can possibly find. So try like a week, right? Like there, and then see if you can generate one. Okay, I couldn't find one. So then go day back, right? Like maybe to the 18th. Try to generate one. Okay, no, it didn't work. Okay, a day back. Try to generate one. And there you go. You have a tracking number now using OA Genius, like we've covered before, to Baltimore, Maryland. This is obviously USPS. So you put this into the order, right? And then you market shipped, okay? And that won't hurt against your cancellation metrics, all right? And then what you do is you come into the spreadsheet. So for example, let's... Um, Let's duplicate this so I can show you. Hanging, Melissa Johnson, leave that blank. That's the fake order ID. This is from Amazon. It's 7505. None of this stuff really matters, but we'll just show you here. And you're, this is what it's going to look like, obviously, when you're about to process the order, right? So instead of actually you know, going through, putting what you spent on it, getting your profit, and then obviously eventually tracking it or inputting the tracking number, what you want to do is you want to mark fake OAG so that you know for the future. And then what you want to do is you just want to X out of all these so you're not actually like keeping track of any profit for this order. And then what I'll do is I'll highlight this entire row blue so I know. You can highlight it a different color if you want, and then I'll minimize it, okay? And then what happens is you'll notice like eventually when that order is, is you know, supposed to be delivered, Melissa Johnson will message you on Facebook and be like, hey, my order's marked delivered, but didn't show up. Can you look into it? What's going on? And then you ask them for the name on the order, and then you can go back and search the name or the actual order ID if you're actually keeping track of that, but the name's the easiest way. And then you'd come back into your spreadsheet, you'd search for Melissa Johnson, in your spreadsheet and then you'd find that order you'd be able to maximize that order and then you'd see that it's blue and you'd be like oh it's a fake oag tracking number so i clearly didn't actually ship this and then you could issue them a refund on facebook okay and that's how i approach that now i have a template that i use to um basically say like what to say to keep the buyer happy this always works it rarely ever kind of backfires and, and pisses the customer off this always seems to work and they're always very very glad that like okay, they, they um, got their refund, they didn't get screwed over because a lot of people are wary of being like scammed on Facebook, right? So what they say when, when like what I'll say if they're claiming that their order got delivered or their, that their order's marked delivered but it never actually showed up, I'll go in, I'll check the order. Obviously, if it's a normal order, then I'll look into it and I'll you know figure out what happened. But if I notice that it's blue with a fake OAG tracking number, then I know that I didn't actually ship that order. I marked fake shipped because it was either very expensive and I was losing a lot of money on it or it was out of stock, okay? And if it is out of stock, you obviously wanna mark that item out of stock on Facebook so you don't run into that issue in the future, okay? But then what I'll do is I'll send them this message template, right? I'll say, somehow this got delivered to the wrong address. I'm currently on the phone with FedEx trying to figure out exactly what happened, but I've gone ahead and issued you a full refund on your order. Sorry for the inconvenience. And then I'll literally refund their order. You can do that by searching your orders, going into your orders, going into shipped, and then searching for the actual order um, up in the order tab. So you can search um, not by the customer name, but you can search by the actual title of the of the, the thing that they purchased and find it very, very quickly that way, okay? And chances are, if it happened recently, it'll be one of the top ones and you can find it, all right? And then obviously you wanna take the screenshot of, the, of you refunding them and send it to them so that they know, right? And then they'll be very, very happy. You'll have a happy customer and you can avoid canceling uh, an order and having that go against your seller metrics, okay? Now, one other issue that might arise if hypothetically, let's say you're buying an item and you didn't realize that, um, you know, the shipping time to the customer took a while, right? What I'll do is I'll mark the estimated shipping time in yellow in the tracking right here. So I know that, okay, this is taking a while to get there, right? And the same overall concept, 
this isn't going to be highlighted blue because I did actually purchase this one, right? But I'll know going forward that, okay, this item's actually arriving a lot later and I'll be able to look into that later. But I will mark this with a fake OAG tracking number if three days has passed and I need to mark this uh, order shipped, but it hasn't shipped out yet, right? So for this happens to me every once in a while. It doesn't happen frequently. Obviously, ideally, you'd be shipping only products and listing only products with short shipping times uh, within like a week. So that pretend, or you know, maybe ten to fifteen days max, uh, so that you can obviously mark them shipped eventually, and with the actual legitimate tracking number or a a OAG tracking number that you know estimated delivered before or, or not before on or after the actual date, right? But if for whatever reason you do accidentally list a product where the shipping time's long or you need to use this, what you can do is you can mark this with a fake OAG tracking number as well, and the same thing, you just generate a tracking number. Same overall thing, like if this person was going to Baltimore, Maryland, you generate the fake o the fake OAG tracking number to Baltimore, Maryland. If they're going, if the person was in, you know, Los Angeles, California, you'd list Los Angeles, California as far out as possible because you know it's it's not getting delivered to them. You want to buy yourself as much time until they message you, right? And same thing. Then you'd mark, you'd take that that uh, tracking number, you'd put it in the spreadsheet. This would be yellow, so you knew obviously like this is a long order going forward. And then same thing, like. You'd minimize it and you move on to the next order, right? And so what would happen is eventually that person would message you and then you'd be able to look back at the order. And by this time, you know, a week or 10 days from now, when you generated a fake OAG tracking number, you would ideally have the actual legitimate tracking number to give to them, right? And that's how that kind of works, all right? So that's basically how you, you can deal with, you know, processing orders um, or canceling orders or, or really dealing with orders when you're either losing a lot of money on an order or your item is out of stock. Now, there are plenty of times, well, I'll actually go, through, go ahead and process an order that I'm losing money on as long as I'm not losing a lot of money, right? Like, for example, there's no really set metric, but like if I'm losing like 10 bucks, every once in a while, I'll just process the order. I don't really care. If I'm losing like two or three bucks, I'll process the order. I don't really care. And then I'll just raise the, the price of the item up in the future so I don't run into that issue again. But if I'm losing like 20 or 30 bucks, then chances are I'll either cancel that order if it doesn't go against my metrics, or what I'll do is I'll mark it with a fake OAG tracking number, and then I'll obviously um, raise the price of my item on Facebook so I don't run into that issue again, all right? But that's basically the overall way of how you can handle it uh, going forward. Now, one other template that I forgot to go over with you is if you're using this, uh, this like, delayed one for whatever reason if you're buying an item uh, and shipping an item that has a long you know kind of time frame to the customer when they actually message you because their items marked delivered and it hasn't shown up and you go back and you see like okay it's yellow clearly that or you even look at the order id on the supplier's website and you find that it's still not showing up for like another week then what you can do is you use this one when they actually message you like seven to ten days later and you say hey i just checked and i asked and it looks like i accidentally input the wrong tracking number i'm really sorry my mistake because you're owning it you're basically saying i made a mistake and when you do this like ever most people are really nice about it they're just glad that they're actually getting the information on their order every once in a while you'll have somebody that's annoyed that like you know okay like i i don't really want it anymore because it's taking like weeks to get to you but 99 times out of 100, the customer right here, when you say these things, is going to be very, very grateful that they're actually still getting their item and they have information on it, right? Because like I said, most people are wary of getting scammed. And as soon as they find out that their orders marked delivered, but, um, you know, it hasn't actually shown up, then they're going to be, you know, very upset about that. So you can mitigate that by saying, hey, I just checked and it looks like I accidentally input the wrong tracking number. I'm really sorry. My mistake. I mix it up with another order. I've been getting a lot of these lately. Yours is expected to be delivered on, and then obviously tell them when theirs is expected to be delivered on, and you can see that in the actual uh, order tab of your supplier's website. And if you have tracking number by now, which you should, unless it's like a long Amazon order that gets marked with a TBA, then you want to generate another OAG tracking number and input that here. But chances are, if it's like a long order on eBay or a long order on another website, you will have the legitimate tracking number by now, and you can then give it to them, right? And then you say, sorry for the misunderstanding, you send that to them, and then boom, they're happy. So that's kind of how you handle that. Hope it helps.